Hi everyone, Nubkex here, and we are on the patch 9.1 Chains of Domination PTR. We are on the testing realm. It's live now, by the way, so anyone, I believe, can just hop on and test it out if you want to test out these things for yourself. Uh, but today we are going to be checking out, look at this, guys, the Soulbind trees. We're going to look at every Soulbind tree for every covenant. They have all been massively increased with one, two, three, four more rows of conduits here across every single tree. So we're going to be talking about that. And there are some very, very powerful effects here. Now, just to note, I, I believe it's, well, I wouldn't say bugged on the test realm, but it's probably just all of the conduits are enabled for us. Uh, even though we don't have the renown we're supposed to to have them, I think that's probably for testing purposes, right? But as you can see here, there are actually an additional 40 levels of renown. So I'll flip through those real fast. You're going to see things in there like world press rewards, PvP item level. There's uh, a couple of trans transmog things, but really not much. Uh, here's something else that's... Uh, sorry, no, not this one. Where was it? There's something else new in here. Ah, oh, yeah, adventure upgrade. I don't know what that means, but there's an adventure upgrade thing. Um... I, I don't know, do we see, I don't see any upgrades on my adventure, so I don't I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, but this is where you're gonna be unlocking your Soulbind upgrade. So again, I'll flick through this so you can sort of see, maybe there will be some more um, uh, transmog things added in here, more collectibles, I don't know. But as of right now, this is actually gonna be pretty important. A couple of deepening bonds in there. But yeah, you're gonna be collecting Soulbind upgrades all the way up to re uh, Renown 79, guys. And then at finally at Renown 80, there are new titles for each Covenant. But um, yeah, this is gonna be a pretty big power gain, I think, because these are very powerful traits we're gonna look at. So getting that Renown up to 79, and then stopping and never getting 80. No, uh, it's gonna be pretty important. Let's take a look here. You can see I've been playing with this a bit already. So we have a new potency conduit. Uh, in fact, for every single soulbind tree, that seems to be the next step is you're gonna unlock um, another potency conduit, the third one on several trees. But yeah, I think this is a good call. It's great. Just yeah, more slots. So I've already stuck in rabbit shadows here, going with my shadow flame prism on shadow priest. Then you're gonna have two options. We could go for, this is a uh, Naya. So on Naya, first option, called shot. When you critically strike, you gain 20% move speed for five seconds, but this can only occur once every 10 seconds. This is pretty fantastic, right? This is in combat, 10 second cooldown, super short. So just half of the time, basically in combat, you're gonna have 20% more move speed. Phenomenal for PVP, for melee players, especially chasing people down or kiting as a range player. Great for move, staying mobile in dungeons, avoiding all those effects on the ground and so on. That goes with an endurance slot. So that's a very strong option. The other option, which you can see I actually selected is survivor's rally. When you fall below 50% health, you regain 20% of your health over 10 seconds and receive 5% additional healing from other spells and abilities. This can only occur once every 60 seconds. So again, this is a very, very powerful defensive, uh, 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 conduit slot here really really strong very reminiscent of the frenzied regen uh, uh, slot for uh, druids for example very powerful uh, great for example on classes that do heal themselves you're going to get five percent additional healing so like as a shadow priest healing with devouring plague uh, all that sort of stuff pretty cool so yeah big powerful progression defensive and that goes with a finesse conduit and then finally capping off the tree we have bonded hearts gaining a stack of redirected anima from grove invigoration heals up to five nearby allies for two percent of their health if any of the affected allies are of another covenant redirected anima's mastery and maximum health effects are increased by 50 percent for five seconds so this is a pretty crazy capstone trait here. Uh, if you guys don't know what it does, Grove Invigoration here is whenever you heal or you deal damage, you have a, a chance to gain a stack of redirected anima, which gives you 1% max health and gives you 25 mastery for 30 seconds. The stacks overlap, activating my Covenant ability, which is a 1.5 minute cooldown, gives me instantly 12 stacks. Um, so yeah, kind of nutty. So long as you are playing with people of another Covenant in your dungeon group, uh, in your arena team, in your raid team, it's going to just straight up increase the effectiveness of this by 50%. You're just getting 50% more bonus. Really, really nice. And then also you're just constantly pulsing out 
uh, all of these little heals to all of your team. So this seems extremely strong. Uh, and I kind of wonder, I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> having to have allies of another covenant, is this like sort of targeted at like those MDI teams, which are mega stacked on Night Vay and stuff like that? Certainly very, very intriguing and very powerful. Let's take a look at Dreamweaver. Next option here. So Cunning Dreams is option one. Entering Soul Shape slows enemies near your starting point by 50% for six seconds. Seems like a strong PvP talent, especially with Pod Tender. Uh, that goes with Endurance slots. Or you could go for Waking Dreams. When you take damage below 80% health, you gain a shield for 30% of the damage amount, lasting three seconds. So this, again, seems very strong. I'm not sure if it would just keep adding to the shield. So especially if there's very high incoming damage, it would just constantly be adding 30% of that to the shield and mitigating 30%. I don't know. I think maybe when you take another chunk of damage, I have no idea. It might just completely refresh the shield, something like that. I'm not sure, but this seems very strong. It's obviously only a three second shield, but just straight up getting a shield for 30% of the damage that you took if you're below 80% health. That is a very powerful defensive ability. Very, very strong. That goes with the Finesse Conduit. And then finally, we have Dream Delver. Dealing damage or healing a target grants you 1% increased damage or healing to that target for 4 seconds, stacking up to 3%. So again, single target boss fight. Your first 3 spells, right? First 3 damaging abilities. Each build up a stack and then bam, 3% more damage to that single target boss for basically the rest of the fight, so long as you can keep hitting them. Uh, if the buff does fall off, not a big deal. Just hit them again three times and you're back up to 3% more damage. Yeah, this seems very, very strong. And I think it's pretty appropriate that it's just, you know, a 3% single target increase, seeing as it is a fairly defensive tree with pod tender. I think it's nice that there is that then really powerful throughput talent just straight up here at the bottom. So there you go, another powerful tree. Let's take a look at the final one for Night Fae, which is Karain. So Vorkai Ambush is option number one. After interrupting or disorienting an enemy, they deal 5% less damage for five seconds. This seems great for tanks in particular. Goes with an endurance slot. So yeah, this definitely seems like a tanking line. The other option here is Hunt's Exhilaration. When damaging an enemy or healing an ally within five yards, you gain 3% leech for five seconds. And that goes with the Finesse Conduit. So yeah, this one obviously seems relatively weak, I would say, for a ranged damage dealer. Um, maybe even a ranged healer. It's a little sketchy, but not too bad could actually be quite good, but certainly for melee DPS, for tanks, you're going to have this basically up all the time, just a straight up 3% leech, just keeping you topped up, so that's pretty exciting. And then the final capstone here is the Wild Hunt Stratagem. When your damage or healing is enhanced by Wild Hunt Tactics, gain Wild Hunt Stratagem for one minute. The next time you damage an enemy who's below 35% health, or heal an ally who is above 75% health, Wild Hunt Stratagem is activated to increase your damage and healing to such targets by 5% for 10 seconds. So again, we're based off of this, uh, damage to targets above 75% health, healing to targets below 35% health increased by 10%. Intriguing. Um, okay, the next time you damage an enemy who's below 30 So it's the opposite. It is the opposite. That is kind of interesting. Huh. This is definitely a, a wacky one. It's definitely a wacky one. I, I'm thinking of like, you know, the Fury Warriors that are going a uh, Night Faith at the moment. So they go in, they're just gonna be, you know, whatever you charge in, you get your damage boost at the start of the pull, and then you get into your execute phase and you're gonna be doing 5% more damage there as well. The next time you damage someone below 35% health. It's interesting. This is interesting. This one seems a little more complicated. It doesn't jump out immediately as being as good. You know, doing 5% more healing to targets who are above 75% health. Do I really care about that? So that one's a bit weird that it's flipped of this, but there you go. Let me know what you think. They are the Night Fae Covenant Trees, Conduit Trees, upgraded. Very powerful effects. Let's go check out the next Covenant. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the Kyrian Soulbind Trees. You can see this is my warrior alt. It doesn't have the stuff unlocked. All this stuff is locked down, but let's take a look. So again, much like all the trees, starting with our potency conduit, these new slots here for every single tree. Uh, for Pel uh, not Pelagos, yeah, Pelagos is his name. Names are hard. Let's look at his options. Option number one is better together. 
During combat, moving within three yards of a party or raid member inspires both of you, increasing mastery by 40 for one minute. Players may only be affected by one such effect. So that's quite interesting, right? Just make sure you stand on a friend every one minute and you both get a bit of mastery, kind of picking and choosing what friend you stand on. Obviously for melee players, it's gonna bounce around a lot. But yeah, okay, some free mastery for everyone. Uh, everyone chase the Pelago Soulbind in raid. Make sure that you are taking that mastery before yourself. The BM hunters will have that on lockdown very easily. Uh, that goes in the endurance slots. Path of the Devoted, then, is your other option. After re recovering from a loss of control effect, you take 15% reduced damage, and your movement speed cannot be reduced below 90% for 6 seconds, may only occur once per 30 seconds. This seems like very, very much a PvP powerhouse talent here. So that's sort of how I see this breaking down, is you've got the PvE tree, getting more mastery, and then you've got the PvP option, big, uh, yeah, really nice, like, you know, whatever, a, a sub rogue or whatever, a rogue opens up in you in PvP, you pop your trinket, and you've got 15% reduced damage for six seconds if they stun you again. Kind of cool. Um, then finally, the capstone, the new capstone to the Pelagos tree. At any moment during combat, there is a low chance your doubt will manifest for 10 seconds. Directly facing your doubt will overcome it, granting you 12% primary stat and stamina. So this, actually, I love this idea. This seems really cool that I get, you'll just see this little thing pop up, just look at it, and then phew, get a big boost in stats. I think this is super fun. It's kind of thematic for Pelagos, and it's a really powerful effect uh, with a little bit of gameplay, actually, kind of baked into it. Uh, I guess the only concern here might be that some people might find this kind of annoying and ooh, w w was Pelagos the only viable DPS tree or like the best DPS tree for Kyrian? Well, maybe not anymore. Let's check out the other Soulbinds and their options here. So let's look at Clea, first of all, the classically healer-focused tree, you know, getting these uh, critical strikes, building up Valiant Strikes, which is going to heal people uh, for their max health. What do we have here? So option number one, Spear of the Archon. Movement speed increased by 6% while out of combat. Gain 3% critical strike chance for 10 seconds after damaging an enemy above 90% health. So quite a slick one for world questing, Torghast, Mythic Plus dungeons, where you're you're spending a lot of time running around between combat, and then yeah, just frequently having those enemies to, to pop that extra crit chance. Not too bad, goes with an endurance slot. Or the other option is Hope Springs Eternal. Your file of serenity reduces damage taken by 10% for eight seconds, and its effects are also granted to your lowest health ally. Oh my, <laughs> oh my, well, 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 uh, let me, can I, can I find my steward here? Uh, all my key bindings are messed up. Here, c come here, Stuart. So, I obviously, I haven't tested this, the, the server's just gone live, I don't even have access to this, obviously. I'd need to grind out a lot of renown, which is unlikely to be something I do here on the test realm. But bear in mind, File of Serenity gives back 20% health and removes all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleeds. File of Serenity is pretty strong, and do we even have, um... File of Serenity heals you for more health, and the healing is a, a heal over time. There is stuff to empower it in this tree. But yeah, there you go. So, uh, I'm looking at the wrong... Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. The, uh, does she have anything that empowers the file? Here you go. Makes you immune to curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects for 8 seconds. Okay. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, okay, so there you go. So you're gonna give your teammate 20% more health, I guess, 10% reduced damage taken. It's gonna remove all those different effects and could potentially make them immune, though you would give up, uh, up a potency conduit. That seems extremely strong. Definitely super powerful, I would say, in Arena, right? That you could Vial of Serenity your teammate, like your healer is getting tunneled, they're getting trained, you need to save them, what do you do? Hope Springs Eternal, you, you know, whatever, cleanse all those effects off them. Give them some damage reduction. Kind of nuts. That goes with the finesse conduit. And then finally, capping off the tree, light the path. Your Valiant Strikes grant 0.25% critical strike chance per stack. When your Valiant Strikes heals an ally, you gain 5% critical strike chance for 12 seconds. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Clea opening up as a much more viable DPS tree, I think, once you finish this. So just straight up, 
every time uh, every time you get a crit, you can get up to 20 stacks of Valiant Strikes. So that can give you up to, you know, 5%, just flat crit if you're sat there 20 stacks. And then whenever you heal an ally, so whenever an ally uh, drops below 50% health, you're going to use up all of those stacks. It has a one minute cooldown, mind you, but it's going to give you 5%. Uh... Okay, when your Valen strikes, you just gain 5% crit strike. Okay, so it doesn't stack up. I was thinking it might stack up and give you like 100% crit chance for 12 seconds. I guess I was being too optimistic. That is a little bit silly, but still pretty powerful. So yeah, you're just going to build up a bunch of crit chance. When someone drops low, just get the max crit chance for 12 seconds. Then you got to wait a while for it to come back. Again, pretty nice. This is still great for healers. Um, you know, get a bunch of extra crit uh, whenever your your team is dropping low. Awesome. And just for everyone else. So, yeah, big buffs to this tree, I think. Really nice. But then let's check out Forge Light Mechanicos Prime. Or Forge Light Prime Mechanico. Optimus Prime over here, all right? Check out Optimus Prime. Option one, Soul Glow Spectrometer. Damaging or healing a target analyzes its merit over 15 seconds, increasing your damage or healing to it by 1%, increasing by an additional 1% every 3 seconds. Cannot start a new analysis until the previous one has finished. So 15 seconds, it's going to start at 1%. At 3 seconds, it's 2. And 6, it's 3. 9, it's 4. 12, it's 5. So it goes up to like 6%. I guess it resets at 15 um, instantly. So you're going to get somewhere scaling between, you know, 1 to something like 1 to 5 or 6% increased damage done to a particular target. It does kind of punish you a bit for target swapping, but on the whole, that's really nice. That's really, really strong. That's just a consistent single target damage or healing increase. You certainly have to think about which target or you t uh, damage or heal first in order to to track which one you, you, you are analyzing. So that goes with an endurance conduit, so pretty strong. Option number two, reactive retrofitting. After taking physical or magic damage, gain a shield that absorbs damage equal to 8% of your maximum health for 10 seconds. Each incoming damage type may trigger this effect once per 30 seconds, right? So the first time you take physical damage, 8% max HP shield. First time you take magic damage, 8% max HP shield. Last for 10 seconds. You can trigger the physical and magic shield. They each have independent 30 second cooldowns. Yeah, that, that's, again, really nice. Just a good, consistent chunk of survivability that goes with the Finesse Conduit. And then finally, Effusive Anima Accelerator. Spear of Bastion released a blast of overcharged anima at your target's location, doing 3,700 arcane damage split evenly between all targets over 8 seconds. It also reduces the cooldown of Spear of Bastion by 4 seconds per affected enemy to a maximum of 20 seconds. To put this in context, the Spear of Bastion, with my gear level right now, does 2,700, let's say 2,800 arcane damage, and then 2,600 as a dot, right? So 2,800 up front, this thing is going to give another 3,700 as a dot. And it's also going to reduce the cooldown if I hit 5 targets by 20 seconds, bringing it from 1 minute to 40 second cooldown. This seems absolutely insane. I'm not sure how this is going to work with other uh, other classes, but certainly for Warrior, this one seems absolutely banana. Just a massive chunk there. Obviously, it's split evenly between all targets, so it's not just going to be, you know, this is just that damage to every target, so okay. It's not going to be as much, but, like, that's a massive burst of single target damage, a huge extra chunk. Gives you that extra cooldown reduction in AoE. Seems super strong, so very excited to try out that one with uh, Optimus Prime. Okay, actually check this out. Enhanced conduit slots increase the effects of your conduits. Uh, mm, they're all enhanced. So we can actually make our conduit stronger. Okay, that's going to be probably tied into the new zone, I would guess. Okay. What do they do by deep? So let's say, hang on. Um, let's say... Shake the foundations. Earthquake is a 12% chance to cast Chain Lightning at a random enemy. 13.3%. So it's like 10% increased effect on the conduit. Okay, that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, great. Well, cool. Great. There you go. That's what enhanced conduit slots are. 
So it looks like you're going to be grinding those out and, and earning and upgrading them. Kind of cool. Right, let's check out Necrolord uh, Soulbinds. Plague, Divisor, Marilith is first. So, our two options here. Option one, Viscous Trail. When struck by a snare, you drop a puddle that lasts for 10 seconds. Enemies that step in the puddle are slowed by 70% for 5 seconds. May only occur once every 60 seconds. This just screams extremely powerful in PvP. Um, might be a little nice for tanks in dungeons, although you don't have a ton of control over it. And it's got a long 60 second cooldown. But for ranged people trying to kite dudes in PvP, this seems incredibly strong. Goes with an endurance conduit. Your other option is the undulating maneuvers. While above 80% health, 5% damage taken is delayed and spread out over 5 seconds. All right, so everyone can, can live your best brewmaster monk dream when you're above 80% health. Uh, that goes with the finesse conduit. And then the final new capstone is Kevin's Oozling. That's my name, so I appreciate this. Um, Primordial Wave summons Kevin's Oozling to fight alongside you for 15 seconds. His attacks cause your enemies to take 2% additional damage from you, and he periodically grants your allies an absorb shield that absorbs a minuscule amount of damage. So that's kind of cool. So whenever I'm using my Covenant ability, which uh, for Shaman, for instance, um, for Shaman... It's a 45 second cooldown, so I pop my 45 second cooldown, and I get this this oozling for 15 seconds that makes all my enemies take 2% more damage from me, and he's also going to give my allies some shields. That's kind of awesome. That's pretty fantastic. So, yeah, that seems like a nice little DPS boost, certainly for Shaman, uh, and pretty nice as well. If you guys didn't catch in 9.0.5 the rework to Fleshcraft, if you guys are just coming back to the game now after maybe you took a break uh, after a month or so of Shadowlands, yeah, Fleshcraft also is massively buffed as well. You can read the tooltip there and check it out. So, yeah, Necrolords. Looking kind of exciting. Let's check out Emeni next. Or Emeni? Emeni? I think Emeni. Emeni. Soul Slough, I think. <laughs> After standing still for five seconds, the next time you move, you and nearby allies gain 20% increased movement speed for 10 seconds. So, a strong option here, I think, for casters, especially in PvE scenarios. So, kind of nice, you know, help your team move out of the move out of the big swirlies on the ground in dungeons or raids uh, by giving them all 20% move speed for 10 seconds. So, kind of nice. That goes with an endurance conduit. Our other option here is resilient stitching. While above 90% health, you gain a shield that absorbs 4,400 magic damage for one minute. This effect may only occur every one minute kind of nice again um bearing my my current health on this character is 2800 uh, sorry let's say 2800 28000 28000 health this gives me a shield for 4400 4, it's a nice little shield against magic damage easy to trigger this every minute yeah it just helps you survive some of those big bursty overlaps it's a nice thing to bring into the start of an arena that sort of thing kind of cool then finally, capping off the uh, Emony tree is Pustule Eruption. Fleshcraft covers you in three pustules per one second channeled. Taking damage or being healed pops a pustule, dealing 650 nature damage to nearby enemies and healing nearby allies for about 1,000 split between them. Interesting. Okay, cool. So kind of, uh, you know, for a ranged DPS, this is probably more of just a bit of bonus healing to your team but for melee dps pretty nice it's going to do a, a little bit of extra aoe damage it's going to do some healing there you go kind of interesting right that's kind of interesting a little bit out there and then finally for bonesmith air mirror on this this character here that has been neglected since the first couple of weeks of the expansion option one is carver's eye Damaging an enemy above 90% health grants you 152 mastery for 5 seconds, up to 5 stacks. You cannot gain this benefit from the same target for 10 seconds. So we pull a pack of 5 mobs in a dungeon. I smack all of them on pull. And I'm going to get 5 times 150 mastery? <laughs> Are you serious? Right? What, what is that? Is that like... Uh... Not 750 mastery for five seconds. I know it's only five seconds. What if I damage only four of them, and then I hit the fifth one, 4.5 seconds into that buff? Does it stack it up to five stacks, and then it, it lasts another five seconds? That seems kind of insane. That seems potentially really strong for some 
massive, massive burst on pull. And that goes with an endurance slot. So that's intriguing. Other option is waking bone breastplate. When three or more enemies are nearby, your maximum health is increased by 5% and the effect lingers for five seconds. So more of a tank focused thing here or just a bit of survivability for melee DPS. So I mean, giving up a bunch of mastery seems like a, t a tall order for melee DPS. huh? Uh, and then finally, the capstone mnemonic equipment. When you damage an enemy that's below 35% health, 3% of the damage is uh, you do is repeated over 5 seconds. Healing an ally grants them the ability to have their damage repeat this way at 30% effectiveness for 5 seconds. Limit 2. Okay, so interesting option here. So just straight up for, for any damage dealing spec, it's essentially 3% extra damage in execute. Execute, of course, being... Uh, the most valuable damage type in the game so that's kind of decent and then i could also do something like whatever drop down a healing stream totem and that's going to give two of my allies a 30 percent version of this effect one percent extra damage and execute that might be worthwhile it's certainly interesting if i had some passive healing things that could be really good mm. It's an interesting option here. Certainly interesting. But there you are. They are the Necrolord trees. I would say, on the whole, I, I sort of always felt that the Necrolord trees felt a little bit underwhelming uh, before. I, I feel like this stuff, there is some cool things in here. But it it's, I would say it feels a little bit weaker or more niche or weird than the other two covenants so far we've looked at. But let me know what you guys think. Does this stuff seem insane to you? I mean, Carver's Eye seems kind of insane. Mnemonic equipment could be fun. I don't know. But there you go. That's the Necrolords. This is great fun. I'm on my rogue. I, I don't actually have access to, to Soulbinds. I'm still on the... <laughs> I'm still on the quest. Oh, oh, God. Ice Wall. Oh, this is the new PvP talent for Frostmage. Oh, no. They can make it in... Oh, no. Oh. No path available. Where's Shadow Step? They can... Oh, no. Oh, this is so bad. He's, he's delighted. He's doing his spins. He is absolutely delighted with himself. That's a new PvP talent for mages. Apparently, you can use it to grief people in cities. Fun. Okay. Great. I'm sure that won't be changed. Keck. <laughs> oh, let's go join the Covenant, though. All right. We're in. We're in. I've done it. Uh, let's check out the Venthyr uh, Soulbind upgraded trees. So, Nadja the Mistblade first. Uh, of course, always beginning with these new potency slots in every single tree. Uh, option one, Sinful Preservation. Health potions and he uh, health stones grant you an absorb shield equal to 50% of the amount healed. And that goes alongside a finesse slot. So making those defensive heal potions a good chunk stronger. Very nice. Option number two is Nimble Steps. Enemies within eight yards are slowed by 10%. Just always passively. If you fall below 35% health, enemies within 8 yards are rooted for 4 sec sec. I guess it's supposed to be 4 seconds. This can only occur once every 60 seconds. So this seems, again, actually quite nice for, let's say, tanks in dungeons. You know, whatever. You just tank enemies. It's a bit easier to kite them. If you do drop low on health, they get rooted and helps you run away. And obviously very strong for PvP. That goes with an endurance slot. And then the capstone, the new capstone for the tree, is Fatal Flaw. When the haste effect of Euphoria ends, gain 10 sec sec of either 20% increased critical strike chance or versatility in caps for some reason. Whichever you currently have more of quite intriguing so again the way that it works is thrill seeker you're building up stacks of thrill seeker every two seconds four stacks whenever you kill an enemy then at 40 seconds 20 percent haste for 10 seconds once that buff expires then it's going to give you 20 percent crit chance or 20 percent versatility for another 10 seconds based off whichever one is good for you so that is just a really powerful uh dps upgrade right there or healing upgrade so yeah pretty nice there for natcha i think um Theatar then, up next, option number one, it's always tea time. When Soothing Shade activates, Tubbins and Gubbins each offer you a cup of tea, healing you for 200 health every one second, and reducing damage taken by 5% while standing in the shaded area. That goes with a finesse slot. So again, it's just a random chance to call them to your side for 12 seconds. You get that big mastery buff. Uh, this obviously seems very appealing, certainly for tanking. 
Very, very nice for that. Damage reduction, some healing. Uh, could be good for other uh, roles as well, though. The other option, then, is Life is But an Appetizer. While you are well-fed, gain 60 speed and 60 avoidance. It's actually quite a lot there. So a bit of extra move speed, a bit of extra damage reduction. So essentially here we've got two uh, defensive options, either the kind of always on option uh, for PVE, certainly, or this one, which is more of a PVP thing or maybe more for the tanks. And this one goes with an endurance slot. Life is but an appetizer. The new capstone then is party favors. Once per day, you can speak with Theotar in Sinfall to obtain the Mad Duke's Tea, which increases your agility by 3%, or your haste by 3%, or your critical strike chance by 3%, or your versatility by 3% for one hour. I don't like this one. <laughs> I don't like this one. You know what would be fun? Might be okay is... No, I, I don't know, man. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. It gives you a one hour buff once per day. So don't waste that world questing before raid or your soulbind tree sucks. You know, make sure you use it during the, the one hour of raid or your soulbind tree sucks. You can only do arena pushing for one hour a day, mythic plus pushing for one hour a day. Then you got to go switch your soul bind. No, I don't like I, I hopefully I think this will be changed. This seems bad. It also seems like it's random as to what buff it gives you. That's it. Have it be just whatever. Whenever you pop your covenant ability, it gives you this buff for, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. Whatever. It gives it gives you one of those effects randomly. That, it, not not great, it's still random, but that'd be better. So this is the first one we've looked at so far that I just look at and go, no, 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 no. These soul binds are supposed to be a big tree of just a whole bunch of buffs to your character. It's not a, a one hour out of every 24 hour buff. No, change, please. Blizzard, thank you, goodbye. Next up then we have jean Raul Draven. That's his real name, he's French. Uh, regenerative stone skin. Any overhealing done to you will heal you for an additional 15% of the overhealing amount over six seconds. Uh, maybe this seems kind of weak. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, let's say in a raid, typically there's maybe like 20% overhealing. There could be even more overhealing than that. But, you know, you're getting a heal over six seconds, but you're going to be at full health. This seems pretty weak to me. Honestly, that goes with the finesse slots. Then the other option is intimidation tactics. While below 50% health, Door of Shadows cools down 50% faster. That goes with an endurance conduit. That seems better to me. Just, you know, faster cooldown of Door of Shadows has some uses, I guess. Both relatively weak options. Let's see if the capstone can save it, though. Battlefield Presence. Each nearby enemy trembles at your presence, increasing your damage and healing done by 1% and reducing damage taken by 1% up to a maximum of three enemies. Okay, now we are talking. All right, there we go. So awesome, especially in dungeons, just 3% more damage, 3% more healing and take 3% less damage if you're fighting with three enemies or more. Yes, that is really, really strong. That is super, that's good for everyone. Literally, that's good for every. Uh, single one. It looks like it has a hundred yard range, so it's still gonna be good for range damage dealers. We'll see if they reduce the range or something, but yeah, okay, that is much better. So there you go, guys. They are the Venthyr trees, and that is all of the Soulbind upgrades uh, as they stand right now on the PTR. Again, this is PTR. All of this stuff is very much subject to change. Again, I suspect that party favors almost definitely will change. I do not see that being a popular option. I'm not even sure why they put it in, to be honest with you. Um, but there you go. On the whole, uh, I think this stuff is kind of cool, actually. These seem like very powerful traits. They're going to feel pretty good. I'm certainly... I would like to see... Uh, while you're in there, Blizz, and you're changing this, if we could remove co uh, uh, conduit energy as well, so we can actually switch these trees around and build our specs that we want to, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like it, actually. Uh, I imagine it might be unpopular because people like to hate on this sort of thing. But uh, I actually think it's quite fun. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's kind of neat. And, and they're very powerful things to actually chase and up your power over the course of the patch. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you think, though. Are there any that seem really overpowered and broken? Really fun? Really unfun? Should be changed? Let me know. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.